Good morning, motivators. Just finished up a little 15K, nice little Sunday run day fun day with some new pals here on Vancouver Island. Time just flies by when you're chatting away with somebody, right? So let's say you're a beginner runner. You're just getting into the sport. You're reading a bunch of articles, watching a lot of videos, maybe listening to some podcasts about how to get into running. And there are a lot of things that are being said over and over and over about your shoes, about your running technique, about what pace you should be doing. Most of them are right, but there's a lot of things that are just not being talked about whatsoever that are really critical to understand when you're getting into running for the first time to make sure that you're progressing quickly, that you're avoiding injury, that you're not wasting your money. So we're going to go through the seven things that I think beginner runners need to know that they aren't hearing about whatsoever. So motivators, I remember when I first started running, I went through all of the standard things that everyone goes through with knee pain and back pain and having a hard time building up my endurance and going and getting shoes from the local run store. And all of these things really made the learning curve very steep. It took me probably about two years before I ended up feeling even somewhat comfortable as a runner, but then, I ended up cluing into a lot of these things that nobody's really talking about and within a matter of just a couple of weeks, everything all of a sudden felt a lot better. So we're going to go through the seven big things that I've found over the course of the last 12 years in endurance sports that make a really big difference to running enjoyment injury prevention, getting your gear right, all of these things that go into not hating running, and you're going to be able to get into that mode of enjoying running really quickly. You don't have to take the two years that I took. One of the first things that you're going to hear is that you need to go get fitted for good shoes. Go into a running store where they're going to measure your feet and see your gait and recommend a pair of really good running shoes for you. I really agree with this. Going from Kmart shoes that are kind of trainers to actual proper running shoes will make a really big difference to your enjoyment of running. But what they don't tell you is that quite often when you go into these running shoe stores, they look at your gait and they will prescribe you motion control shoes or stability shoes or over pronating shoes. And this really isn't what has been shown to help beginner runners. The studies show that you need to run in your natural running gait, not being limited by your shoes in any way, shape or form until your lower leg strength is built up to be able to accept different types of movement patterns. You need to run in your normal movement pattern. And the easiest way to do that is with a moderate weight shoe of about seven to nine ounces with a neutral running profile. So do that and you're gonna be less likely to get injured. Get those very big built up, structured, recommended, designed for you kind of shoes and you might actually be contributing to injury and not actually working within your body's normal biomechanics. That might be why it feels different and kind of funny to run at the start. The next thing related to that feeling is pain. A lot of people are going to say, well, it's going to hurt at the start and you just gotta get through it. You do just have to get through it. I believe that it takes a good three months to really build the feeling of what your natural running stride is. And in the meantime, it's gonna hurt a fair bit because you might be taking anywhere between five and 15,000 steps with three to seven times your body weight going through your structure and it's not used to that. Things are going to hurt, but you can reduce that amount of pain by getting the right technique in your run and people aren't saying that the pain could be caused by incorrect technique. Very simply, good running technique is where you're landing under your center of mass. You can find this spot just by bouncing up and down on the front of your feet and then leaning forward. Then as you start running, trying to land in that same spot that you were landing on as you were just jumping up and down. You're probably going to land more on your mid or your forefoot. I really don't care whether you land on your heel, your toe, your midfoot, your forefoot. Studies don't support that one is better than the other. As a matter of fact, when you're running at a slower pace than about a six minute mile, it can be more efficient to land heel first, but only if you're landing under your center of mass. So you don't ever want to land 
with your foot out front of your body. So getting that technique right is gonna put a little bit of stress on your calf. So you wanna do this bouncing technique, bouncing on the balls of your feet, leaning forward a little bit from the ankles, starting running in very small increments. Do it for maybe three minutes and then go back to your old technique. Then another three minutes, then go back to your old technique and gradually build your way up until it's normal for you and pain-free for you to run landing under your center of mass. The next thing they say, and you'll hear this from me a lot, is to get the intensity right. And people say, well, you gotta run in zone two and you don't wanna do too much of zone three, the moderate intensity, and well, you gotta be careful about how much high intensity you're doing. I agree once you are a seasoned runner. For most absolute beginner runners, zones don't really matter. You just need to learn how to run continuously. So adding all this stress of are you running too hard, are you not running hard enough, to a total beginner runner I think is putting too much pressure on the situation. Really, all you need to do is go and learn how to run with all of the right concepts and techniques and tools in place. We can add in the proper training in all those zones, and we will, and I talk a ton about zone two, but when you're just starting out as a runner, just go run. Don't sweat it. Run at whatever pace feels comfortable, and any negative consequences of running too hard or not hard enough are really gonna be minimal because at this point, you're just learning how to run. Very much related to that, but a little bit of a quirk on it, is that nobody's ever telling you that your body has forgot how to move fast. When we're young in our teens, it's very easy for our body to move really, really quickly, build up a lot of speed. As we get older and we spend more time being sedentary, exercising a little bit slower, our body loses a lot of that fast twitch kind of effort, that ability to neuromuscularly fire really quickly, and that's going to end up slowing down your running because it's just not natural for your body to turn over really well. So I find that a lot of beginner runners, while they might be fit, might go through months, if not years, or their entire running career not having unlocked their actual running ability because they never retaught their body how to move quickly. Myself, it was two years of me really slogging through running thinking I was moving as fast as I could until I went to a soccer field and just started doing wind sprints a few times a month. Not really with any purpose, not realizing what I was doing, but this was teaching my neuromuscular system to fire really quickly. And in just a few months, I went from a 155 half marathon athlete to a 132 half marathon athlete with really just a few wind sprints because it taught my body how to move quickly again. So once you get to the point where running is possible for you for a long duration, go and do some wind sprints, like 10 second bursts. They are very underrated. Also gonna maybe make you wanna puke, sorry. The next thing that everyone is saying is build up very gradually. Don't run on back to back days because you don't wanna get injured. Again, I agree. But when you are a new runner and you're really getting into it, in a lot of cases, people are chomping at the bit and that day where they're not running, they're like, okay, well, what am I doing? What can I do? And then maybe want to go out and run. Instead, what you can do during those off days that you're not running to actually improve your return to running is a little bit of strength training. During those first two years that I was in running, I got a lot of lower back pain and a lot of side of the knee IT band pain. I started doing a little bit of strength training, largely just focusing on the side stabilizer muscles, the glutes, the glute med, the side of the bum, everything that prevented me from wiggling from side to side, and instantly all the back pain went away. The IT band went away. I got a little bit faster because every foot strike wasn't leaking energy out the side and creating all these little micro movements that were contributing to injury. So definitely consider adding strength training immediately when you start running because it's gonna make you much more stable. The second to last thing is a personal preference, but when you get into running, when you start reading about running, everyone's gonna be talking about 400 meter repeats, 800 meter repeats, 1K repeats, 5Ks, 10K runs, half marathons, and everything gets very distance focused. At the very outset of running, I don't think that this is something that you should be focusing on. I don't think it's necessary to build all of what you're doing around running a distance as opposed to just teaching your body how to withstand the pounding for a duration of time.
time. So while you're learning how to run, instead of saying, okay, I have to run this distance, which might be harder on some days than others, depending on how, how you're feeling, instead think of it in terms of, all right, I'm gonna go out for say 30 minutes, I'm gonna do a minute of running and then two minutes of walking, and then a minute of running and then two minutes of walking, over and over and over. Then structure it as a minute and a half of running and then a minute and a half of walking. Think of going instead of 30 minutes for 33 minutes. I really like using duration because it's less susceptible to how you're feeling on the day, what your route is, if there's elevation, if there's wind, if there's heat. We're really just teaching your body to be able to withstand that pounding for a period of time. And the distance just comes naturally. But if you design all of your training at the outset by distance, I think it's going to just confuse a little bit of the training. And finally, the last thing is that very few people tell you that it's gonna suck. I'm gonna be honest, running sucks at the outset. Going from a non-runner to a runner, it's going to be painful. Your feet are going to get blistered. Your nipples might chafe a little bit. You might get low back pain. You might get an injury. You're gonna have to buy some gear and you might buy some gear that you don't end up using, but it's all part of the process. We've literally all gone through these things. And on the other side is a great sport that can enhance your life. That if injuries start popping up, this is a tell that maybe you need to reduce your stress loads or increase your strength training. It's a very good barometer of how your overall health is. And it's a lifelong sport that you can do with friends and continue to chat while you're going through the run. It's a fantastic way to stay in shape and stay balanced. Hopefully with these seven tips, your learning curve is a little bit less. You can enjoy running a little bit quicker. And if you want to dive into one of those training plans for one of those races that I mentioned, you can go to our app at app.mymotive.com where all of the beginner training is included. You can do a couch to 5K, you can do a 10K, a half marathon, a marathon, trail runs. You can do all your strength training. It's all presented to you in the app. All you have to do is put in how much you wanna train and when your races are, and it'll all be customized exactly for you. So go to app.mymotive.com, try it out for free for 14 days, and if you like it, stick around and knock off some endurance adventures with us with some training plans. Later, motivators.